copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. San Joaquin County Sheriff's Office calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 273 regarding a murder. Assist the Dover Police. That's all. Roll. not only to the health of human beings, but to the well-being of automobiles. Only tens of thousands of motorists have these three words in to read. A crankcase full of real lube or real brandy Pennsylvania is the best way to prevent costly repair bills. That's true. Real lube is another way of saying preventive lubrication. This pure 100% paraffin-based lubricant seals your motor. Not only in the easy-going days of summer, but in the far from balmy days of winter because it's made that way. Real lube is so expertly refined that it cannot be slowed up by freezing weather and it cannot be broken down by your engine at top speed. The instant you step on the starter, let it be in the cold early morning or late at night after standing out in the open several hours, Real lube or Rio Grande, Pennsylvania answers your command, immediately flowing to every part of your motor to cloak it with real life-preserving protection. And so, friends... Why use some inadequate oil when real lube has everything and costs you only 25 cents a quart? When you visit your Rio Grande dealer in the morning for that tank full of police car performance cracked gasoline, take on a crank case full of wear preventing real lube. You'll get the best that money can buy. taken from the confidential files of the sheriff of San Joaquin County. We have therefore asked Sheriff Martin Anslow to prepare a foreword to our program. We have stressed repeatedly on this program the fact that crime does not pay. We've cited many examples of criminals who thought they could beat the law, and criminal records contain many cases of clever men and women who have for a time escaped punishment for their deeds. Such was the case with the criminal in the story we're about to hear. But once more, we can point definitely to a case file and say most conclusively that regardless of how bold or crafty, how clever or stupid, the ultimate result of crime is the same. It cannot pay. In the city of Dover, Delaware... Dr. John Reynolds had administered antidotes for poison to the daughters of Congressman Penn and his two grandchildren. It was obvious to the mystified doctor that the two women were beyond all hope of recovery. Uh, how are the children, Doctor? Well, they're doing nicely. Oh. They'll be all right in the morning. Uh, and my sister? She's a very sick woman. I can't understand what you and the children ate to have caused all this. I know it was that candy. I only gave the children one piece each. But my sister and I ate a lot. It was just before we went to bed. Where did you get the candy? That's where I feel sure it... Oh, it, it came in the mail. It was stopped in California. You mean a friend sent it to you? I thought so. But I can't remember anyone I knew in Stockton. Wasn't there any message with the candy? Only a note. It said, love to yourself and baby. I threw it in the fire. I can't remember anyone. I can't. Mrs. Dunn. Hmm. Well, there's nothing to do now but talk to the police about that candy. Want to see me, Bill? Yeah. Sit down, Joe. The police in Dover, Delaware, want us to check up on a case for them. If we didn't have enough of our own cases here in Stockton. Well, it seems a box of candy with arsenic in it was sent from here to a congressman's daughter. It killed her and her sister and nearly got the kid. Was the congressman a Republican or a Democrat? Oh, God, God, that's not the angle. If it was a case of some crank, it'd be a lot simpler. What is it, then? Well, it doesn't seem to be any angle. That's what we've got to get. Don't tell me we haven't anything to work on except a box of candy that was mailed from here. Just one thing. 
This woman that the candy was addressed to had a husband. He was a war correspondent, and he knew a dame by the name of Cordelia Shuttle in San Francisco. She's living in Stockton now. That's all? That's all. Well, did this Cordelia Shutter know the woman she sent the fancy sweets to? The war correspondent's wife? Oh, she never saw her. Ah, this is marvelous. All we've got to do is find Cordelia Shuttle and put the cuffs on her for murdering a couple of women she never saw. I admit the Dover police have a very flattering opinion of it. Of course, we could take poison sales and routine stuff, but it leads from that angle to a chance in a thousand. Couldn't they get any more out of the husband about this Shuttle dame? Apparently not. If we can establish a motive, we'll have something to work on. You mean maybe he knew her too well? Mm, something like that. But he knew her in San Francisco. I suppose all we'll have to do is ask Cordelia about their uh, friendship, and she'll give us all the intimate details. Hey, by the way, how long ago did the guy know her? Well, according to the report, six years ago. Six years. And how long had his wife that Cordelia never saw, how long had she been living back east? Five years. Uh, listen, something's crazy about all this. Well, I just wanted to see if you had the same idea I had. Well, go get your sample brush, Keith. I'll have to dust it off. So we're going to visit Cordelia and try not to sell her any brushes. If you give us one good lead, we'll give her the best sample we got. Sample what? <laughs> Come on, let's get going. You seem to be getting awfully fond of this brush-selling stuff. It's amazing what you can learn about crime. <laughs> Would you be willing to accept an absolutely free sample of a household brush with a thousand uses? Well, I really don't need any brushes. Oh, but you've never seen anything like our line. It's uh, uh, it's, uh, it's an awfully hot day. Could we trouble you for a drink? Oh, of course. Come on in. Thank you. I always say there's nothing like a nice drink on a hot day, but uh, you've got to promise not to show me anything. Oh. My husband gets furious. <laughs> I just can't forget fellows like you with a good line of things to sell. Well, you sure are generous. I mean, it's nice of you to give us a drink. Well, I'm glad to. I was just sitting around here thinking what a dull day it was. Um, what do you boys have to drink? Uh, oh, uh, well, uh, if you've got some water, that'd be just fine. Water? Oh. Well, just sit down and make yourself at home. I don't think we're going to get any place. Well, who wants me, Mel Burgess? Just let me lead the way. And I think of all the energy I wasted dusting this brush case right now. Here you are, you boys. Uh, I'll drink some water with you, just to be sociable. Thank you. Yeah, I sure was thirsty. Yeah, this hits the spot. Yeah, this is mighty good stuff. <laughs> Don't pay any attention to him. It's the first time he's ever tasted water. <laughs> you boys are terrible cut up. I know it's the minute I saw you. It's a mighty nice little place you have here. Yeah, but it gets awfully lonely. I mean, uh, tiresome. My husband's away from home a lot. Oh, you don't say. Don't tell me you waste your life in this town. Yeah, I'll bet you've spent plenty of time in San Francisco. You're just a type for bright lights and gay night spots and all that sort of thing. Oh, I've been to San Francisco. Who hasn't been? You know, I, I'm sure I've seen you before. Weren't you in San Francisco about five or six years ago? I might have been for a few days, but that's all. I've lived in Stockton ever since we moved from Kansas City about eight years ago. Well, I'm sorry we can't tell you any brushes, Mrs. Shuttle. I hope you know my name. Oh, we are the lady next door. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of the tricks of the trade. <laughs> well, we got to sell somebody brushes, so we better run along. Well, let's come around again, boys, when you've got another line. Yeah. Maybe we'll do that. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Wow. That baby's been around. Has she got wife yet? What do you mean, baby? She's 45 if she's a day. Well, maybe she's subtracted from her age. You can see that six years ago, she probably was able to do a lot of subtracting. You mean distracting? <laughs> yeah. So, you're going to keep right on selling brushes to the entire neighborhood. If I know human nature and neighborhood gossip, you will find out plenty about Cordelia. But what if I sell all my brushes? If you do that before you get the dope on Cordelia, you can turn in your badge and be a brush salesman. <laughs> people were so anxious to talk about a Cordelia Shuttle. Nice work, Joe. Well, let's have it. The first thing I found was that she's only been living here with her husband four months. Four months? Where's she been? In San Francisco. 
She moved to Stockton eight years ago with her husband, but she was gone from home for weeks and months at a time. Then six years ago, she leaves for San Francisco and doesn't come back until four months ago. Sure. Oh, well, all I could get was that she was a neighborhood character, a very gay character, until I got chummy with an old maid who lives in the next block. This old maid had a lot of cats and an album that covered every ghost in every closet in stock. Yeah, yeah. What about Cordelia? I'm telling to her. This old maid had a sister that lived in San Francisco and somehow got acquainted with Cleopatra Shuttle when she was up there. Yes? Well, the correspondence that went on between these two old maids would burn up the asbestos station. Go ahead. Well, just remember that Shuttle was 38 at the time, but she was really getting around San Francisco. Well, she was sitting on a bench in Golden Gate Park one afternoon when this fella comes in. Uh, I beg your pardon, Miss. You dropped your handkerchief. Oh, so I did. How careless of me. You're so kind. Not at all. It was a pleasure. A pleasure, I'm sure. It's a lovely day, isn't it? Yes, indeed. You make a lovely picture sitting there. Oh, you men. Always so gallant. No, yeah, that's not gallantry. I have eyes to see you. I never saw such eyes as yours. <laughs> May I sit down? Well, I really shouldn't let you. Please, don't be so cruel. No. No, I can't be on a day like this. After all, there's no harm in two lonely people talking to each other, is there? How did you know I was lonely? I guess I'm just like it. I believe that. <laughs> Your eyes are hypnotic. You see things so beautifully. I'll get you an actor. Or a writer. You guessed it again. I'm a war correspondent for a bunch of newspapers. But right now, there aren't any first-class wars, so I'm at liberty. Uh, my name's John Dunn. John Dunn? Why, I've heard of you. You're famous. <laughs> you think you're talking to a poor little girl like me. My name is Cordelia Shuttle. Pleasure, I'm sure. And I... Uh, I'm not really a girl. I'm afraid to tell you how old I am, you... You won't be interested in me anymore. Oh, but I am interested. Very much. Well, I'm... I'm 33. There. I told you. But you're just beginning to live. And if you'll let me, I'll show you how it should be done. Oh, that will be wonderful. Of course, I'm only 28, but I've been all over the world, so I'm really a lot older than my years. <laughs> how is it that some lucky woman hasn't married you? Well, I am married to Congressman Penn's daughter. We've been married a year, and I have a daughter... But for the man of the world, like myself, there's no reason why we shouldn't see a lot of each other. Now, that's a coincidence. What is? I'm married, too. <laughs> Rich, isn't it? My husband and son live in Stockton. But, uh, my husband isn't interested in anything but business. Mm, how droll. That rhymes with stroll. <laughs> what do you say if we take one? And what would you say if we strolled in the direction of my apartment? Oh, you kiddo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if another war starts, you'll have to get along without me. And that was the way they got acquainted six years ago. A few weeks after he met her, according to the old maid grapevine, Dunn took an apartment in the same building with her. Yeah. And his wife starts to wonder why he's away from home so much. Right. Somebody writes her one of those well-wishing friend letters and spills the beans. So she picks up the baby daughter and heads for the congressman's home in Dover, and she's been there ever since. And then Shuffle and Dunn get really scorny. He stayed that way for six years. Of course, by this time, Cordelia was 44 and had grown from the full-blown to the overblown. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. What happened? Well, Dunn's eyes started to rove around looking for less seasoned cuties. Then about six months ago, the Amalgamated Press assigned their war correspondent, Captain over to Puerto Rico. But he had a neat little war of his own when he told Cortina. Is that you, Ducky? Yes. I have some very bad news, Cordelia. Why, what is it, darling? Tell me quickly. I've been sent to Puerto Rico. I have to leave tonight. But that's not sad. It's wonderful. I'll start the bath right away. What? Oh, but you don't understand. I, I couldn't think of taking you to a place like that. That's what makes me so sad. Oh, John, no matter what kind of a place it is, I'll go with you to the ends of the earth. But I don't want you. I, I mean, it's impossible. I'd still be out of the question. John Dunn, you said you didn't want me to go. Just what do you mean by that? No, I didn't mean that. Of course I want you to go, but you must realize I simply can't take you. Why not? Well, that is, I... Well... Well? Well, isn't it enough that I tell you I can't? No, it isn't. All right, you ask for it. 
I'm going alone, and I don't intend to return to California, ever. As a matter of fact, I'm going to see my wife when I get back from Puerto Rico. I hope she'll have me back. Say that again. You heard me the first time. I'm sorry it had to be this way. Well, I'm so glad you're sorry. That's sweet of you, I must say. Now, don't make a scene, Cordelia. You've developed quite a pension for that recently. Oh, of course I shouldn't make a scene. You walk in here and tell me you're tossing me aside like an old rag. Tag hey, is the word. Why, Go no. ahead and scream. I'm going to pack. Oh, you bet your miserable life I'll scream. After I've given you the best years of my life. If you think you're going to get away with this, you're crazy, you low-down, cheap, undercutting rat. A general idea of how Cordelia and Dunn parted company four months ago. She came back here to Stockton and has been living with her husband ever since. Yeah, just like that, huh? Yeah, yeah. She's a lady who does what she wants when she wants to, in one way or another. Yeah. And we're going to learn a lot more about the bodacious, subtle ways. You think she sent that filthy candy to Dunn's wife? Now that we know her style of doing things, a lot of things are beginning to add up. Look here. Huh. Just plain hemp. Just tag on it. It was sold at a store on Market Street in Stockton. Well, that's the handkerchief that was in the box of two bittersweet candy that killed Dunn's wife and her sister. Ah, didn't bother to take the tag off, hmm? Yeah. It still looks like Cordelia Street forward style. Yeah, but we got to prove it. So you're going to that shop, and I'm going to the nearest candy store. Right. Shouldn't be hard to describe Cordelia, so they'll remember if she ever bought anything. <laughs> Cordelia is definitely a type. <laughs> Darnest reason I've heard yet for wanting to buy poison. 
came in about two weeks ago. I want to buy a bottle of arsenic. But, uh, Madam, arsenic usually doesn't come in liquid form. Well, then I mean I want to buy a box of it. We're compelled by law to ask what reason you have for buying a deadly poison. Just as a matter of form. I want to clean a hat. Yes, ma'am. About how much did you... What did you say you wanted it for? I said I wanted to clean a hat. It does clean hats, doesn't it? Yes, ma'am. But I could suggest something far more effective and less dangerous to have around. If you don't care to tell me what I want, just say so. Of course. I'm sorry. And now about how much... Well, that's a lot more than we needed to know. Thank you. All right, Joe. Let's go see Cordelia again. Will you let me be the one to put a little ring around her wrist? And so Cordelia Tuttle went on trial in the Superior Court of California. Three months later, after the court had relegated her to prison for the rest of her natural life, the judge received the most profound shock of his long and honorable career. As the justice was walking in the vicinity of San Francisco jail, a familiar figure strode in his direction. A pair of luminous eyes attracted him. Oh, good morning. How do you do? Hello there, Judge. Uh, I, I beg your pardon. Have I seen you somewhere before? Now, Judge, for a smart fellow like you, that's an awful old line. Well, I, I beg your pardon again. Uh, I, I know you very well, but for the life of me, I, I can't place you. Now, Judge, do you really want to know my name, or do you want to know me? Oh, you don't have to be dignified with me. Uh, wait, wait a minute. I know who you are. You're Cordelia Shuttle. Judge, how could you forget me? Young woman, what are you doing out here on the street? Why, Judge, I'm going home. What do you mean, you're going home? I'm going to the only home I have now. Don't you remember? You sent me there. You said, Cordelia Shuttle, I sent you to the penitentiary for the rest of your natural life. Well, that's where I'm going. Do you want to walk along with me? Young woman, nothing would give me more pleasure. Representatives of the Law Enforcement Society, we demand... We're investigating the charges of the judge, and we want to know just why... The law-abiding the... citizens of this community are enraged at the conduct. We and... want to know why Cordelia Shuttle walked around the street when she was sentenced to serve the rest of her life in prison. Now, ladies, ladies, I appreciate the gravity of the situation, and as warden of this prison, I will do everything in my power to aid the law enforcement... Of... We want to know one thing. Do you have Cordelia Shuttle in this prison? I've got her. Uh, I mean, she's incarcerated here. Will you please show us the cell where she's confined? Uh, of course I'll show you where she's confined. But it's not a cell. And why not a cell, may I ask? Uh, ladies, there's such a thing as being a humanitarian even when you're a warden of a prison. Cordelia has a soul that would wither and die in a cell, and I'm only doing what well, I... It's true that she walks in and out of this prison, these prison walls, when and as she wants to. That's all we wanted to know. Now, ladies, ladies. Cordelia Shuttle has never left this prison. The judge is an old man. He imagines things. He never saw her walking around the street. Why, such a thing would be impossible. Her freedom ceased the minute he sentenced her to life imprisonment. I give you my word as a servant of this great state that I... Oh, excuse me, Warden. Oh, uh... I didn't know you had company. That's her. It's Cordelia Shuttle. Of course it is. Uh, I'm uh, very busy right now, Mrs. Shuttle. We want to talk to her. We certainly do. Uh, Mrs. Shuttle, uh, these ladies came here to... Uh... Well, I want you to talk. Uh, do you mind talking to them? Why, of course not. Um, what is it you want to talk about, girl? Wait, I must say that. We you want to know if you have left this prison since you were... Wait a minute, girl. I was sentenced to this jail for life, wasn't I? You certainly were. Well, I'm here. You see me here. We're all here. What more do you want? I'll tell you what more we want. We want to see how you're living well, now, girl, there is such a thing as a person's private life. How would you feel if I asked you how you live? Well, what do you mean to stand there? Uh, Mrs. Shuttle, uh, perhaps you would better conduct the ladies to your uh, quarters. <laughs> I'm sure the ladies will understand. I'm but... sure we'll understand a lot of things. Now, that's the right spirit, girl. Just uh, come this way. You know, we women just have to stick together. You see, it's this way, girl. The prosecuting attorney made me look like a very bad woman. But I'm not really that way at heart. I've got a lot of love for my fellow man. Yes. Yes. Well, 
Here we are, not what you call pretentious, but uh, homey. Yes, you think it. And that is fancy. Well, that provides the finishing touch. Oh, that. One of the guards brought that in here for a joke. He said he liked to, uh, well, uh, anyhow, you know how guards are. We don't. But apparently you do. And it's furnished. I didn't even know a warden lived like this. Well, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. Now, look here, girl. Who are you investigating, the warden or me? Both of you. All of you. Everybody. Everything. Girl, calm down. There's nothing to get excited about. Now, one of the guards is going to bring my dinner up in a few minutes. Shall I order dinner for free? I think we'd better go. I don't think there's anything else we can do. Now, don't go away mad, girl. Despite exposure, the invincible Cordelia Shuttle continued to live in a curious surrounding during the succession of appeals. And then came the year 1906, and with it, the San Francisco earthquake. An act of God against which even Cordelia had no defense. The county jail was wrecked. San Quentin became the home of Mrs. Shuffle. Honey, come here a minute. I told you before to address me as Mason. But honey, I just got to see the ward. You've seen him before. He don't understand. I, I got to... I suppose I don't understand. No, you don't. I want to see the ward. Listen, 27837. You're just the number here. Get that? I want to see the warden. I told you you've seen the warden. Let's keep it this way. The warden has seen you. He doesn't want any part of you. Can you understand that? You, you can't do this, please. I've been framed. How had you framed in solitary confinement if you don't keep quiet? But men are responsible for everything I've done. I'm being persecuted, I tell you. Are you going to keep quiet? I'll never keep quiet. I can't talk to you. You don't understand me. I want to talk to a man. Just give me one more chance with the warden. Hey, listen. You're a woman. Haven't you got a soul? Can't you see what this is doing to me? Yes, I can see what it's doing to you. And I'm going to give you one more chance. Will you? Oh, I knew you would. Let me out of this cell. I'm going to give you one more chance to keep quiet. Why, you dirty heel. I'll get you for this. Nobody's ever double-crossed me and got away with it. I'll get you if it's the last thing I... Oh, God, God, put this woman in solitary. You can't put me away forever. And when I get out, you wish you'd never been born. Quiet, you. Hey, listen, darling. See, you're a man. I can talk to you. Can I? Now, you see, sir... In just a moment, we shall present the concluding facts regarding our program. Before accepting the often extravagant claims made for this or that motor fuel friend, give this fair consideration that those who drive the most, who know the most about gasoline, prefer Rio Grande Cracks. More police cars, ambulances, fire engines, and other emergency equipment are powered with Rio Grande cracks wherever it is sold than any other brand. Then try it yourself. And from then on, you too will insist on getting police car performance in your car. In the grim walls of San Quentin, the allurement of Cordelia Shuttle availed her nothing against the unsympathetic attitude of the incumbent warden. Prison hardships proved too much for her. And four years later, she died. Her story is another example of the unalterable fact that crime does not pay. San Joaquin County Sheriff's Office calling all cars. Attention all cars to cancellation of broadcast 273 regarding a murder. Back in this case, thanks to Sam Quentin. And that's all. Rolls and quits. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsay, bidding you good night for Rio Grande. time, Rio Grande will present the case of a lesson in loot. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.